Welcome back to the third and final segment of the Text Time Show. In today's episode, AJ Kumar is giving us, all of us, and when I say all of us, meaning all of us, information about the losses, you know, losses on the business side and what are those, what are the categories of different, different losses. Right before the break, he actually educated us on, uh, on the uh, gambling loss and the um, uh, gambling loss as well as the uh, hobby loss. Now I said that we're going to talk about theft loss and a casualty loss. Uh, so let's start with casualty loss first. Uh, absolutely. So let's define what the casualty loss is. Let's say if there is a flood in the area mm. or there is no electricity in the area and a lot of uh, people are got affected. You got water in the basement. All those losses are considered as casualty. Something happened at a mass level and the loss was created. Now, let's say if you have $100,000 of income in our example and the losses due to flood to your home are $10,000 are you allowed to deduct this loss? That's an example of the casualty loss. Theft loss, on the other hand, is something that somebody snatched from you, somebody sort of took something from you. Uh, it typically does not happen at a mass scale as opposed to casualty, which happens at a mass scale. So theft loss is something that you justify, the, I used to own this thing, now somebody took it from me, either via uh, FIR, some sort of uh, police report that you justify that this was the loss, but uh, in the new rules, we used to allow casualty loss and theft loss as a tax deductible loss on Schedule A. But under the new rule, that section, the miscellaneous itemized deduction section has completely taken out. So what happens on GVG now, all these casualty losses, the theft losses, unless they are defined as a federal loss, as a federal disaster area, say for example, consider COVID-19 situation. Yes. Now, COVID-19 is declared as a disaster for all 50 states. And please remember, it's very important to know if it's in your state or not. Let's say, for example, if there is a hurricane happen in, a, in South Carolina. So that area is a federally disaster area. So those losses are allowed in that area not in New Jersey. Just like last week, there was a storm called Laura. Right. And basically, Laura battered most of Louisiana and some of Texas, and it considered as a disaster area. <laughs> so the residents of Louisiana and maybe parts of Texas uh, residents will be able to claim that. Well, you have to wait. First, you have to, to see if the federal government declares those area as federally disaster area. Once those areas are declared as federally disaster area, that population, the people in that zip code, in that area, are allowed to claim those losses on their tax return. Most likely you will. Uh, Most likely yes. you will. I mean, yeah. they have mentioned that. Uh, absolutely. absolutely. Okay. So we covered casualty loss, theft loss, and disaster loss. Absolutely. Okay. Now let's go to, there's something called passive loss and active loss. Oh, wonderful. That's what a, that's are those things and why they're called yeah. active and passive? Uh, absolutely. So by definition, active loss means you are actively working in that business. I have an S corporation. I'm a CPA. I work in my company to make money. So the losses in that business are considered as active losses. But let's say if you have a friend, your brother, and your friend or brother owns the business, and you say, you know, I'll give you $100,000 as an investor in that business. You are not working actively, regularly in that business. And IRS has defined hours. Mm. You have to be working 750 hours in that business to be considered as materially participating in that business. So if you are materially participating participating in a business, if you are actively working in that business, losses from that business are considered as active losses for you. Also, please understand Sanjeevji, losses for one person could be active, while the similar losses, same losses from the same business could be passive for a second person. Oh, I understand. Because I'm working in the business, Yes. right? I go there nine to five, but you, I needed some money and you loaned me the money, Sanjeevji, hmm. right? You're not working in the business. You are just a passive investor. You're sitting on the side. You're not investing certain number of hours in this business. So in that case, the same loss, you own part of the company. So loss share of your is passive loss, while the loss that goes to my share, say we own 50, 50%. So my loss is active loss and your loss is passive, passive loss. So active loss is can offset all your W-2 income, all your active income, while the passive losses can only offset your passive income. Okay. And passive income is typically from the stock market. Passive income could be from your 
investment property, you sold the property, you were not actively going there to make money out of it. Those losses, passive losses, can only be used to offset your passive income. Okay. And then they're carried forward. Very good. Um, very interesting piece of information, I must tell you that. Sweet. Now, um, you know, I have a question or two. Please. Uh, earlier you talked about net operating losses. Okay. If a business owner out there and has incurred some loss, and let's just say it's a net operating loss, a person decides to close the business, okay? Uh, close the business, now there's a net operating loss exists out there. How does that will reflect on their tax returns? Uh, th th that's, a, that's a great question, Sanjeev. And a lot of people make this mistake. It's very important for our viewers to listen, to understand this concept. Let's say if you have annual net operating loss of $100,000 in your business, and if you were to close this business, the benefit that you could get is going to get lost in your business. What you could do, if you could sell this business to somebody, they could claim the losses, and they'll be happy to pay you some money. Okay. So if you have a corporation with large annuals, a lot of other companies, they have profit and they want to claim the losses. The, the trick here is the, the, the problem that people get into when somebody is buying your business only for the sake of claiming those annuals, their deduction cannot be more than the amount of money they're investing. Okay. Let's say, for example, mm. you have $100,000 of annuals and I come to you, you know what, Sanjeevji, I can pay you $10,000 to buy this company. You are going to dissolve this company anyway. You are closing the company. Yes. So 10,000 is 10,000. You say, oh, okay, mm -hmm. thank you very much. Give me yeah. 10,000, right? Mm -hmm. Now, my, I, even though I inherited $100,000 of Boss. losses, but my loss deduction is limited to the amount of money I'm investing. Okay, very good. Now, let's take that $100,000 example. Please. And from net operating loss, let's go to capital loss. If there is a capital loss of $100,000 in someone's you know, personal life or whatever it is, uh, do they still have to pay taxes on the income that they receive? Ah, interesting, Sanjeevji. It's a common question. We get this question all the time. I have large capital losses. I know I don't have to pay taxes any. <laughs> it's a common situation in the stock market. So the, the trick here is your capital losses, the loss from the stock market, in this example, let's say $100,000, cannot offset your active income. Capital losses can only offset capital income okay. and 3,000 more. Let's say in our example, somebody made $100,000 on W-2 income and their capital losses are 100,000. So in theory, they're zero. But they can only use up to $3,000 of these capital losses That's against it. their W-2 income. Against the, so capital losses can offset capital gains plus $3,000. Okay. So in this example, when there is no capital gain, you have 100,000 of capital losses and $100,000 of W-2 income, you still have to pay taxes on $97,000. And the remaining capital losses will be carried forward for you. Okay, very well. Getting to learn a lot of things. Now, last question. Please. Uh, regarding passive thing that, that, that you mentioned, right? If I don't have any passive gain, can I still take passive loss? Y yes and no. You cannot take passive losses this year if you don't have passive gains, okay. but you can always carry it forward. Next year, if you sell the house, you gain, some, you gain some money in the stock market or you get some money from the investment that you made. That creates passive gain for you. Mm. Now you can create those passive losses against the passive gains and then you don't have to pay the taxes. Okay, Uncle Sam or Department of Treasury or IRS, they are very, very smart in putting all these things together. Well, you really can get away with so many losses. Well, it's very important for you to understand what type of losses you have so you can find the best tax treatment in your situation. And in many cases, if you know, if you have the option, you can convert your losses from one type to another type. Say, for example, if you have, if you know you're going to have losses in this business and you're not investing enough time, if I were to tell you I can count these losses, active losses, if you invest these many hours, wouldn't you consider investing yeah, absolutely, hours? Absolutely. So knowing the situation, knowing the type of loss is very important. Okay, interesting and that's why I always say that you need an experienced and knowledgeable CPA like Mr. AJ Kumar uh, for your taxes. So any question you have, do send us an email, text time at tvhiusa.com. Mr. AJ Kumar, a CPA and MBA with Science CPA Services, a full-fledged accounting firm, provides uh, personal accounting services, personal tax returns, as well as all kinds of corporate tax return and services, along with 
setting up a new company and how to set up a new company and what kind of company is good for you. All the full service, uh, Mr. A.J. Kumar of Science APS Services can really help you out. Text time at tbasiausa.com. Ajay Ji, thank you so very yes, much. my pleasure. Thank um, you. A lot of information on losses, but I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah, I learned absolutely. a lot today. And with that note, I am Sanjeev Pandey. I'm wishing you all happy and loss-free days ahead. Until we meet again, so long.